Welcome back to the Matt Moscona YouTube channel. Appreciate very much you being here. Appreciate you for subscribing to the channel and certainly appreciate you for checking out all of our whiskey reviews. If you check the playlist at the top, you'll see the uh, whiskey reviews. You'll see Morning Scone, which is me with my random daily musings about sports, different rants, media appearances. It's all there, so please peruse the page please subscribe, hit the red button down there. So I've really enjoyed doing these whiskey reviews. I've enjoyed all the feedback and commentary. If you're new to this, essentially, I am not a pro and I will never purport to be a professional whiskey connoisseur or drinker or anything or, or uh, a reviewer or anything like that. I'm just a guy that drinks a lot of whiskey and I'm happy to tell you what I enjoy. And one of the things that I've loved is I find that the most people that have found these videos, that have watched them and commented on them, are people that are relative newbies. People that, and if this isn't you, that's cool, but it's been people that are maybe the Jack and Coke or Bourbon and Coke type guy, and you'd love to start sampling, sipping whiskeys, but you're just not sure what to do. My advice is always gonna be, find what you like and just enjoy it. You'll never get a judgment from me. If there's something that you love, Knock yourself out and enjoy it. That's what this is made for. So, something I wanted to do today is give you my review on a very interesting whiskey, and that is the original Mississippi floated whiskey from Caneland Distillery in Baton Rouge. So, the backstory with this is that years ago, when everything had to be shipped on a boat, uh, when whiskey of Tennessee or bourbon of Kentucky was distilled, it would be put onto ships and floated down the Mississippi River to the port of New Orleans and then distributed that way. So what Caneland Distillery did is they took whiskey, what is, which is distilled in Tennessee, for five years. They float it down the Mississippi River just like it used to be done in olden days. The bottle says here is that, that it travels 1,100 nautical miles. And then they finish, they blend it and finish it in cognac casks, casks in their distillery in downtown Baton Rouge on, I believe it's St. Philip Street. St. Philip Street. They have, by the way, if you if you're in Baton Rouge or if you're ever in Baton Rouge, and you're looking for a cool thing to do, go to the Cane Land Distillery. The way that they have finished that out is awesome, and they have a great variety of different things from. Um, rums and vodka and, of course, original Mississippi floated whiskey. So, um, I think it's very cool that it's finished in cognac vats. I love the story. I love the fact that it's Louisiana. I love the fact that they got the little pelican uh, on the label right there as well. So, let's go ahead and pour this. And I'll let you know my thoughts on original Mississippi floated whiskey. Again, if you have not yet, please subscribe to... The YouTube channel when you're done here. I'll leave that there for product placement. You're welcome. Original Mississippi Floated Whiskey. Hopefully you really enjoy after I'm finished talking about it. So first uh, sip down the chute. And if you're familiar, if you've watched the page, my sort of tastes, I like a little sweeter. I don't like when it goes down the chute hot. I love a long finish. Um, and I really want to get a, a, a ton of flavor in there. And I like, I like sweet, but I also like different. So this sort of fits that bill. So Get this first shot down quickly. Okay. So, the first thing you'll notice, which is, in my opinion, almost impossible not to notice, is that sweet, sort of fruity flavor that you get from the cognac vats, just because it's so different. You can taste things that are finished in rum uh, casks or in, uh, in red wine uh, barrels that we've talked about before. This is just so very different that it's impossible not to notice that right away. And the sweetness of it, I really, really enjoy. So I'm gonna do another sip and I'm gonna let this one sort of sit on my palate a little longer. So, I would definitely say I love the sweetness. I love the fact that it is very easy to drink. It goes down smooth, and that is something for me that I'll always look. I never want to be drinking something neat or on the rocks and, and look like I just swallowed motor oil, and people look at me like, are you even, even enjoying that? So I like something that goes down easy, and this definitely fits the bill. I like that it's sweet. I even, I even love the backstory. You notice it's a little lighter as well. The... Um, the color there, even after the pour. So there's a lot that I really like 
about original Mississippi floated whiskey. It, it, it tastes really good. It's local. I love the story. It's drinkable. Uh, you could pour this on rocks if you don't like any. You could pour it on the rocks and drink this so easily and enjoy that all evening long and never feel like you had to pour something else. So all of those things are very, very, very positive. There's one thing that I really don't like about original Mississippi floated whiskey. This bottle is going to run you in the $70 range. And for me, I am always, always, always looking for value. What do I like and what am I willing to pay for what I like? So for example, we have shared things on the channel before. Like I, there was a, uh, a single barrel Elijah Craig that was in the $25, $29 price range, which was magnificent. Smooth, long finish, flavorful. It was great, $29. Bucks. For me... My jam is Whistle Pig Old World 10 Year The Rye, which is in that $70 ring. Same as this. For me, that is what will be the basis of my comparison for anything in that price range. I love rye alcohol. I just think Whistle Pig, their whole process is fantastic, and everything I've had from them is marvelous. And the 10 year for the value, like the 12 year is great as well, but then you're getting into like the $112, $112 price range. So for me, the $40 difference isn't really worth it because the 10 year is magnificent. So that's where I'll that's where I'll reside, and I will always and forever have Whistle Pig 10 year on my bar, and that is my favorite thing to drink because of the, the quality and the value. So if I'm looking in that $70 price range and that's my that's my my gauge, then I try this, it doesn't hold up. It doesn't hold up on the flavor. It doesn't hold up on the finish. I start to get picky. It's like if you go to a restaurant, if you walk into Texas Roadhouse and you order a steak and it's $18 and it's flavorful, it's cooked to perfection, you get a cold beer, fantastic. When you go to Ruth's Chris and you spend $60 on a steak, you don't want... Your expectation level changes entirely based on price. Is that fair? So same here. When I see $70, I need to have my socks knocked off to consistently have that on my bar. And while I enjoy this, it's not at that level. So here's what I would recommend you do, because I like this very much. And you may drink this and just be wowed by it. So what I would recommend you do is go to a bar that has old Miss original Mississippi floated whiskey and order it. Order a cocktail at a bar. Have them pour it neat. Have them pour it on the rocks. See if you enjoy it. And if you do, then go buy a bottle because this may be something that you find is absolutely your speed and you will love forever and ever and ever. Or maybe you enjoy it, but you're not willing to spend $70 a bottle on it. The other thing I would recommend you do is ask for it for a gift. Father's Day is coming up. Maybe your birthday, whenever Christmas rolls around, whatever the occasion may be. If it's graduation... If, if you love it and you want to try it, ask somebody to give this to you for a gift. That's how I got it. It was gifted to me. And see if you enjoy it. And if you do, the next time, go buy it. It's all the tricks of the trade because what I would tell you to do, the worst thing for, in my experience is, having, is being curious, wanting to try different things. So upon somebody's recommendation, maybe I'll go buy a bottle of something. I don't enjoy it. And then I'm, fi I'm trying to find creative ways to finish that bottle, mixing cocktails or whatever it may be, trying try to force it on, on people that come over as guests and say, don't drink my good stuff, drink that, and try to convince them that it's good. Anyway, um, get it as a gift, go find it at a bar, sample it, see if you like it, because whatever your case may be, maybe you got a ton of disposable income, and if so, great for you, and go go enjoy it and knock your, knock your socks off. But what I would strongly recommend you do is find out first if you like it before you go spend that price point for a bottle like this. In the meantime... Cheers. Please subscribe to the page if you haven't done it already. As always, if there's anything you'd like me to sample, I am more than happy to do that. So leave a comment below. Uh, message me. Let me know. I'm happy to, to uh, sample and review anything you may want. In the meantime, cheers, and we'll see you on down the road.